we were color folks and then Negroes and then black and then African-American. The name always changed to protect the innocent or to indicate a new political, a new consciousness. Henry Louis Gates Jr. In recent episodes of the Broken Traditions podcast, I've been taking deep dives into complexities of black identity. From my controversial video, I'm a descendant of slaves who's conflicted by reparations or they not like us. The problem is we're not like them. And lastly, the double-edged sword of Kamala Harris' historical candidacy and the gift and the curse. These conversations have planted the seeds for something much bigger. Today, we're taking a step back to ask the fundamental question. What does it really mean to be black? Should we continue to be black? Should we redefine being black or should we let it go all together? This episode is a preface to a series where we'll dig deep into these crucial questions, examining the roots, the evolution, and the possible future of what it means to be black in America and beyond. What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, Laron, aka Real Rap Rhyme. In this week's episode, I want to have a discussion. Being black, what is being black? How do you become black? How do we become black? And should we continue to be black or is it something that we should redefine or should we let it go? This conversation is the building blocks for a future episodes about being black. And at the end of those episodes, it's about five or six episodes, I'm going to give you my conclusion on what should be the determined factor of being black. Should we let it go? Should we continue to hold on to it? Should we redefine it? And I want to really dig deep into this, really have a conversation, right? This conversation came from a number of things. Um, one, it came from previous videos, right? Like, I'm a descendant of slaves who's conflicted by reparations. Another video, um, they not like us, but the problem is we're not like them. Another video I did, Kamala Harris, a gift and a curse, talking about her candidacy and how it's a gift and a curse. But a part of that video, a part of that episode with Kamala Harris, we talked about her racial identity and if she's black or not, right? Me personally, I'm okay with Kamala Harris calling herself black because you guys called Bill Clinton black for playing the saxophone on the senior hall. So I'm okay with Kamala Harris, right? But those three episodes is part of the building blocks why this episode started. And this episode is also the building blocks for future episodes. But another building block for the episode is a question that I was asked or a question that was put in front of me by Maurice, right? I met Maurice at, he was my Lyft driver last week when I went to go meet up with LDBC in Atlanta. And I knew it was going to be an interesting ride because Maurice pulled up in a Porsche, right? He pulled up in a Porsche. It was like a cheap, it was like a nice Porsche, fully loaded Porsche. And we started flowing, having conversations. And he asked a question or he put a question in front of me that was so profound. Maurice said, how do you act like yourself if you don't know who you are? So those episodes, conversations like that with Maurice, conversations I've been having offline, online with different people, either with comments or emails or, you know, text messages or, you know, DMs or whatever, all these different conversations I'm having with people. When Maurice said, how do you act like yourself if you don't know who you are? I'm saying to myself, how do I know how I'm black? Because if you read books, right? Like me personally, if you're watching a video, you see three books behind me. Um, the Warmth of Other Sons from Isabel Wilkerson, Wilkerson, that is about the migration of blacks in the South moving to the North after, this, uh, after slavery. Um, Frederick Douglass, The Life of Frederick Douglass, and um, rising from the rails, the story or the history about the Pullman porters, the people who worked as the Pullman porters on the railroads for the Pullman, for George Pullman Company. Those books was historical timepieces. And in those books, they never used the term black. You know what I'm saying? It was always Negro from Negro to colored. Then from colored, you know, it went to black. But it wasn't always, it wasn't black. It was you a Negro man, you a colored man, or you want to be derogatory and disrespectful, you say you a nigga. That's what it was. So those are the context of the conversation that was had in those books in historical times. 
So how did we become black? And that question, like I said, Marie said, how? How do you act like yourself if you don't know who you are? Do you know or do you remember when we became black? The term black as a racial identifier for African-Americans became more widely adapted in the late 1960s and early 1970s, particularly during the civil rights movement and the rise of the black power movement. This period marked a shift on how black people referred themselves, moving away from terms like Negro or colored to embrace black as a symbol of pride and identity. And I had to do some, some research, right? We became black during the civil rights movement. And the reason why we became black, because the people who was in the civil rights movement decided that since the stigma of black people from Jim Crow and all the disrespect and derogatory and the separation and all that stuff that made black people feel inferior, it was time for us to now identify ourselves. So instead of us being colored in Negro, from us seeing those signs, knowing that we had to go through those doors to use those dirty bathrooms or had to go through those doors to sit in those dirty seats in the theater. Since now that we have those things ingrained in us, when we see those words that describe us, let's now redefine ourselves. Now let's break that tradition of being a Negro, of being colored, and now let's be black. So it was something that we did to redefine ourselves in those situations. When I heard that, when I when I, when I came across that, because I never thought about it. I just knew that that's what I was. But when I thought about that, to me, that's profound. To me, it's like, yo, what you describe me as, I'm no longer that. I'm now self de self-defined, self-described. I'm building on myself to have a conversation who I want to be as a man, as a woman, as a person, as a child. That's why you start seeing the Afros in that time as opposed to the conks prior to that. You feel me? You start seeing that. You start seeing us being ourselves, us just having the black skin and, you know, everything that we, we define ourselves at that time. It was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment and broke away from the traditions of being in the inferior mindset into now a superior mindset. Right. And I thought that was a great thing once I learned that history, but also we realize it in that history that, we had to break away from being Negro, from being colored. Now we fast forward to now, should we break away from being black? That's what I'm going to ask. That's what, long story short, to get to that whole type of scenario, right? I want to ask, should we break away from being black? And knowing that that was the reason why we became black, should we become something else or should we just let it go altogether? Should we just be American? Should we just be Jamaican or you know, Nigerian or whatever, you know, description you want to give yourself from nationality wise, right? Should we, should we just identify with that? I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted by it. And that's why I'm doing a series of episodes to have that conversation on different, different aspects, right? So if you guys are into that kind of content, you guys have had that kind of mindset or just want to have some thought provoking conversations, please follow the movement of broken traditions, wherever you find me at, whether it's YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, Rumble, TikTok, Instagram, X, Threads, Patreon, wherever you find me at, follow the movement so you won't miss out on these conversations. Also, also, go to my website, www.brokentraditions.com, where you can sign up for my newsletter so I could directly contact you guys when I drop information, when I do a blog post, when I do a short, when I just want to have a conversation with you guys directly. Also, if you guys want to support me, help me keep keep Broken Traditions independent so we can have these kind of conversations, support the movement by becoming a tradition breaker. Become a tradition breaker. On that, you can become a member of the YouTube or the Patreon. Membership starts at $4.99 a month. It goes a little higher on the Patreon. You get free merch with your membership if you're a member for a few months, right? So say, for example, you're on the higher tier of the Patreon, you might get a gift like a hoodie like this, right? You might get a Broken Traditions gift. And that also helped keep the lights on with Broken Traditions. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody who's part of the memberships. And last week during the memberships, we had a a recording of an episode that was um, recorded in front of a live online audience with myself and this bohemian gal, Rogan, right? A great conversation that's a part of this conversation that has come to follow. So if you guys are into that, like I said, 
Follow the movement. If you want to support, become a member or just Cash App or PayPal. I'll put all the links for everything in the descriptions or in the show notes. Oh, first, let's let's go to this whole cultural adoption of being black. Because who's black, right? I talked about Kamala Harris. I say that she's more black, but you guys gave the Bill Clinton the past of being black, but not Kamala Harris, right? Who's black? I'll take it back to a rap group from the 90s that blew my mind that they came out with this. I was a kid, and I still didn't understand it. I still don't understand it till this day, Deontay Wilder voice. Young black teenagers. Have you guys ever heard about this rap group, the young black teenagers from the 90s? It was literally a rap group called Young Black Teenagers, and this rap group (laughs) were men that were white in their 20s. So they wasn't young. They wasn't black or they wasn't teenagers, but that was the name of their rap group. And their reason for the name of the rap group is to spark a conversation that perhaps hip hop could be a portal into blackness. You don't have to be born, quote unquote, black with black skin, but hip hop could be born into a portal for you to get to be a black. It's that easy. So Bill Clinton playing the saxophone, that's black. Young black teenagers saying that the young black teenagers, even though they white men in their 20s, is black. We allowed the floodgates to be so loose and fluid with being black. Then I'm watching the Olympics, right? It just, you know, this is how my mind works. I'm watching the Olympics and I'm seeing posts on social media. I see, say, uh, Sydney McCoughlin. I'm not sure I'm saying her whole name right, but she runs, oh my God, black girl magic, even though she's mixed. But then you see a sage still, she ain't black. What? The same dynamic. You see a uh, J. Cole, oh yeah, black black man rap. He's so nice. You see Drake, he ain't black. He not, he not like us. Which one is it? How does it how does the goalpost move all the time? Oh, what about Jordan Childs, right? Oh my God. We see three black girls on the stage accepting the medals, right? Then how Jordan Childs is black, but I go back, like I said, <laughs> say Stills is not black. How does the goalpost always move? They both have mixed, they both mixed race. Are they black when they accomplish something? Are they not black when they say something you don't like? What's the, what's the criteria? What's the criteria of being black? I'm not mad as you guys calling Jordan Childs black, but it just doesn't make sense when you call her black and not say still. Or you call Kamala Harris not black, but Barack Obama is. Like the goalpost has always moved. What is it? Just it's, it's too many, too many terms and conditions, or the terms and conditions for being black is too many pages. Like you know how you download an app and it's like a hundred pages. You gotta just you just you just scroll through and you don't care about the ends of the terms and conditions. You just hit accept because you want to play uh, Angry Birds. You don't care about the terms and conditions. You want to play Angry Birds. That's what being black is. Nobody cares about the terms and conditions. You have to keep adding more things and putting more things on there and nobody cares about it. Then I want to ask a question, right? When it comes to black identity, what is it, right? Because it's it's too, I think the lines are too blurred when it comes to black identity. The lines are blurred because on one hand, you have a uh, black greatness right like this is why i moved to atlanta to see this black greatness to see black people doing things at a high level that is like wow that made me inspire that inspired me to do stuff right i could name a few people that i met out here right just to do some name dropping like sunny seeing sunny take her cooking to the level she took it to is inspiring because not only she's a chef but then now she's an author a content creator, like she does so much. Another person I could mention that I met out here is Chris Classic. Seeing Chris Classic create, it, it just have all these great fragrances and clothes and designs. It's like, damn, you put that together? You know what I'm saying? We we both from the same hood. Like I'm from Freeport, he, he from Hempstead. And I'm like, wow, like somebody that is not too far off from me could do this. Another person I met out here, Chris Hudson life journey i'm like meeting chris hudson was a big inspiration for me to start my own clothes like seeing him do it at the level he did it is inspirational you know what i'm saying inspirational that this man came out with a sneaker it wasn't like some 
bullshit sneaker that's like a copy paste that like some template you know he designed the sneaker from start to finish from the box to the laces to the tongue everything like that is so inspir that is so inspiring so inspiring um meeting musicians you know what i'm saying just meeting people who just create music you know what i'm saying shout out to durand going to his events to meeting people at durand events shout out to like desmond like i'm meeting these people i'm like yo these people are so creative and just it just so it's it's inspiring. That's what make Atlanta so inspiring. You know what I'm saying? And you see black people doing this all over the place, right? And it, it's like you always, you always run into somebody doing something great in Atlanta. It's it's dope. It's so dope. It's too many people in name that I met that that inspired me in my six years being here. But that's why being in Atlanta, being somewhere where you're seeing black people doing stuff is so inspiring. But then the lines get blurred when you also see black people doing the bullshit, and y'all call it black culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, you in the spot, you just chilling with your family at a restaurant, then some black girl decides she hit back that ass up, she got to get on the table and twerk. you just trying to have your Beyond Burger with your family. And she want to twerk because back that ass up came on. And y'all call that black culture. Like, I could talk about the excellence of black culture. Then we talk about the derogatory parts of black culture. You know what I'm saying? You go to a gas station, some dude coming to Shicey trying to rob you. Not to say it's Atlanta. I mean, all right, I'll give you an example, real life example. I'm in St. Louis. I'm at a gas station. These two dudes try to rob me from my iPhone at St. Louis. I'm in LA. I'm hearing rat -ta 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 -ta. somebody shoot up a line at the club. So it's not just Atlanta to have black bad influences with black it's all over the world it's all over the country i can't wear this hat in la <laughs> i'm from new york i can't wear a yankee hat in la not because the dodgers are so great because this stands for some game i can't wear my atlanta hat that's another game y'all put that as black culture y'all idolize people who are promoting the worst of our culture you know what i'm saying like i talked about gang culture we literally had snoop as the ambassador of the usa in the olympics snoop was taking pictures with uh, uh detective stabler <laughs> from lord or the seu throwing up crit at the olympics in paris so we 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 promote the worst of our culture we promote the sexy reds we promote the worst of our culture and call it black culture. That's why the lines, the lines got too blurred. That's why I ask, should we just let it go? Because the lines are so blurred now. You know what I'm saying? We can see excellence in a brand like a life journey just be so dope. Then we can see the derogatory of some girl that want to twerk on top of her Kia Optima at the gas station because Lotto came on. Why is it the same? Why why we don't detach ourselves from this? We don't. And that's why I'm like, I want to start having conversations to build up to say, yo, black culture, let it go. Black culture, hold on to it. Black culture, let's redefine it. But we got to do something. In my opinion, we have to do something. Man, let me know how you guys feel about this. Uh, I, I, I'm already recorded one episode for this i have more episodes coming up more people i need to reach out to more um schedule i have to do but let me know how you feel about this man like we talked to, i'm talking about the global impact of what black culture looked like and how we treat it when we talk about the the black vote i want to talk about black women i want to talk about black men i want to talk about all of it i want to break it all down to come to a conclusion of what is black culture and should we hold on to it or should we let it go because we let go of negro we let go of colored we let no nah, mind we ain't let go of nigga we let go of those things because those things is something that we need to detach from appreciate y'all man all right man till next time peace real rap ron is signing off all right later one